to the penultimate episode of uh, this one. Night of the Rabbit. I spaced. We are back and we have made it to the tree and there is Zaroff and he is creepy. This must be the clearing. The clearing of the first tree. I see a volunteer who would like to participate in this magic performance. Ladies and gentlemen, will you please give him a hand? You're a creep. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a volunteer. I forgot my phone. It's charging, so I'm going to be running blind on time. With my clairvoyance, I look right into your heart. He sent you. You put off kind of a creepy a pedo child. vibe, buddy. Jeremiah, I was once just like you. Then I faced a cruel reality. The facts. I became a grown up when he locked me out of those incredible worlds. But our world is not a place for magic. No matter how brilliant you are, success is impossible. But I'm sure he didn't tell you that. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> Only for him. You will soon realize that. He should never have sent you. You're a douche monkey. He will soon come to realize his mistake. Perhaps he will grieve for you more than he did for me. Anyone would. I'm not afraid of you. You still have much to learn. The audience, they love only me. That's because you've brainwashed them. <laughs> but we have wasted enough time. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I am banishing this boy into the wood of the first tree. That's not a good no! thing. No! Ah! And that, honorable audience, is magic! Is magic! <laughs> yeah, I really get a creepy, I don't want to let my child talk to you vibe from this guy. Seriously. Jerry, can you hear me? We haven't got much time. My magic isn't strong enough to ward off Zarov's curse for long. Okay. Then I banished you into the first tree. I tried to shield your mind from the clutches of his black magic as best I could. Do not falter, Jerry. Be on your guard. Zarov's spell nails have darkened the soul of the first tree. Others must be trapped in its magical wood as well. Go and find them. Do not succumb to fear, Jerry. You must not give up. Must not give up. Not give up. Give up. Must give up. You must give up. No! You're a douche. Uh, 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 where, where am I? I? I must have fallen asleep. The lazy boy fell asleep right in front of a poor poor tree. Huh! And he wants to be a tree walker? What a sacrilege. The music ah. is skipping. <laughs> Plato? I'm sorry, but my friend Jerry needs help again. I haven't got time for strangers. Strangers? But I am Jerry. He thinks that cardboard figure is me, and he doesn't remember me at all. Oh no! Snap out of it, frog. <laughs> What wretch is this, daring to disturb the quiet of the woods? Me, the I babble a lot. Angry. It really didn't like being woken up. 
Whoa! It's a gigantic toad from the forest. Silly little Jerry was actually dumb enough to approach a dangerous, gigantic monster toad. should talk to it. Maybe it knows how I can get out of here. An excellent idea. <laughs> Silly little Jerry is completely befuddled. I don't like this narrator. It's Zeroff. Hmm. The toad's breathing rather heavily. No wonder it's got these ugly posters sticking all over its body. I'll try to tear off the posters. I'm going to squish you. No, you're not. Wow. Nobody dies in these adventure games. Rufus managed it, but let me he's get a... any closer. You spell disaster for everyone. I did not. You used us. Those eyes are freaking me you out. You want to hitch a ride on my bike, but I need to deliver the mail. Jerry didn't care what the frog said, because he was too lazy to walk. What? But it wasn't like that at all. <laughs> Styrofoam chestnuts. What have we here? Looks like a script to me. The Curse of Zara. Act one, silly little Jerry. I am not silly. <laughs> Hated by all woodlanders. No, that's a lie. An obnoxious moocher through and through. That's not true. Finally trampled to death by the angry rock toad. Who, who would write this nasty stuff? Who do you think? <laughs> What a cry, baby! Nothing is like it seems. You must give up. The spell nails have darkened the soul of the first tree. Just give it up. Just bite me. Zaroff. Hooray for Zaroff! Everybody's brainwashed. I gotta keep that in mind. Normally these people are on my side. I must stop Zaroff. Curses. Two large boulders. That were much too heavy for puny little Jerry, of course. Huh, I'll show you. <laughs> See? Jungle grumble. Oh, I'm almost right. Look, it does do a body good. Hmm, I wonder what the switch does. It switches on the light. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> All right. Hello? Hello there. Luminance Lighting Service. How may I help you? A good friend of mine would like to be back in the limelight. Who's the lucky guy then? A large toad, here on stage. Very well. I can see illuminating this gentleman will be a truly daunting task. This looks like a job for a limelight deluxe. Now he closes his eyes, and I can sneak up and shove styrofoam chestnuts up his nose. Uh-oh, the chestnuts went pretty far up his nostrils. Take your hands off me, human. I are you. No more posters! Oh wait, there they are, and now they're gone. My mind and now they're back. Is clearing. They're glitched. I was willing to squish you, but the spell that fogged my mind is now broken. Ah. I will now return home. Good for you. To the streams of time. See you later. Isn't 
Isn't that good enough for you? <laughs> Alright, now we need to snap him out of his trance. Cherry? Cherry, where have you been? Where have I been? The three of us were in the dark tunnel. And then... Oh, just as long as you're doing all right. I was about to say the same. And the nail is friendship done. Friendship removes the nail? Who's supposed to believe that? Hey, friendship is very nice. Yes, friendship is very nice. What's going on here? Where did Plato go? Unfortunately, Plato, the clumsy amphibian, recently had an accident with his bicycle. Oh, really? He broke all his frog legs on an oak while being forced to deliver a useless letter for a certain... Jerry Hazelnut. Ha-ha! <laughs> Man, miserable bitch bit! Hey, look who's here! Charming as ever. <laughs> Check the script. The curse of Zaroff, Act Two. Let's see. Without hesitation, Jerry accepts the Leprechaun's gold, and in return gives up his hopeless fight. He ceases to live. No. Not likely. First you wanted wishes, and now me glittering gold. Not particularly. If I hadn't known it. All you need to do is give me your knife. Right here, on stage. Immediately, Jerry was absolutely determined to do just that. The end. I'm not going to do that. But gold is the most terrible investment of all. Go ahead, boy. Draw your last breath. That would make everyone happy. <laughs> You're a jerk. How odd. There's a tear in the hill. The silly boy felt himself slowly going crazy. Reality itself appeared to be breaking apart. There's something behind it, too. Hmm. I can't widen it with my hands. Nail. Right. This should work. Wait. Jerry. Yes? Do you really want to know how deep that rabbit hole goes? Yes, it's I'll stupid. take the blue pill. What about to uncover a terrible secret? Fine by me. The terrible Leave secret us? of... Is that all? Jerry was so disappointed he wanted to die. <laughs> Never. Button. Oops. No! Ouch! The lovely shamrock! It came off! I I'm sorry. I think I ruined the lawn. Lever and button. Ouch! Oh no! Me gold! Me gold! There! Now I can reach the top part. Ha! Jerry's lethal trap is sprung, and he steals the poor leprechaun's much more elegant top hat. I just want to get out of here. Dirty thief! Well, who cares? This should snap him out of it. He protects that hat like gold. nobody's business. It's gold! My... But what is plastic chips? Curses. By all the snatty snap noses of all the peat bog banshees. If it isn't, young Jory, the plumber. <laughs> Looks like you're rid me of great delusion, boy. Thank yes, you I ever did. so kindly. I surely owe you. Should I turn someone into a sheep to stop this madness? I think so, yes. No, no, no! You must help me remove the nail. 
No, turn oh, tear off into a sheep. And Seriously. Johnny doesn't like to be beholden to anyone. This wish is on the house. Hail and rain and wafts of mist. Thanks, Mr. O'Donnell. The curse I was under is broken. I'm going home. And O'Donnell is born for freedom. You remember that, you ugly conniving whisperer. Free nail! Dibs! Next! Get on with it! The land of volcanoes, sharp swords and man-eating fox spirits. What a beautiful place to fail in, Jerry Thor. Just give up, Bonehead. Hey. Now you're I'm getting personal. Fox, I swear. Kitsuna. You are hey. trapped in a human's body. No mask can hide that, Kitsuna. But... Humans and foxes can never be friends. But if a human accepts the fox for who she is, doesn't that count? Even if that were the case, why aren't you changing back? I, I, I tried to change back. It, it just won't work. You may wish to be a fox again, but your heart is lost. I shall protect your ears from the confusion wrought by humans. I shall heal you from being human, or devour you as a human. You're kind of an ass. Kitsuna. Great, a new script. The Curse of Zaroth, Act 3. Little Jerry won't give up. He kept bothering the foxes incessantly. Until... They grew tired of the immature smart Alec and devoured him, bones and all. Ouch! <laughs> Louder! Louder, you say? But how? <laughs> Louder. Let's see what happens when I hold this thing against the bell. <laughs> My ears. Kitsune's bell. I hope she'll remember her bell. <laughs> Kitsuna? J Jerry? Are you trying to rob me of my remaining senses? Human! I shall have all humans suffer for this, including your little Kitsune. I'm a fox, I swear. You may wish to be a fox again, but you said that. your heart is lost. I shall protect your ears from the- Jerry! Quick, Kitsuna, run away! You belong to us! No. I will always be a fox, Jerry. <laughs> and Jerry's sound carrier shattered in his backpack. Oh, great. The sound carrier broke. Oh, man. <laughs> Kitsuna, are you all right? Jerry, I... Humans and foxes can never be friends. But if a human accepts a fox for who she is, doesn't that count? You may wish to be, be a fox, fox again, but I shall lost. Eat I or devour as you as a human. Kitsuna, don't listen to him. He's not himself. He will keep you forever. Jerry, why don't you just leave? I will always remain a fox. I know, and that's a good thing. You are you. You are a fox. I am. I... 
am a fox. <sighs> Foxes fight. <sighs> Young Jitsu, I am but a blind guardian, but my mind once again sees clearly. I owe you my thanks, human. You're welcome. Be a friend to her. Totally. She's awesome. Another nail. Friendship removes the nail? Who's supposed to believe that? Hey, it worked last time. Next scene. Next scene should be the Arctic, I believe. I called it. Can I do something? Where am I now? Ice everywhere. And water, as far as I can see. The wind is very cold. The boy was so overjoyed at getting to spend another vacation in one of the most beautiful places on Earth. V vacation? That, cheering loudly, he tore off his clothes and jumped into the ice-cold water. Jerry on the rocks! <laughs> On, yeah? I'm beginning to think you don't care about me at all. Mr. Hazelnut, I resent your attitude. The only thing I care about is art. But you just won't follow the script. Yes. Damn right I won't. Please, forgive me. Oh, oh just try harder. Don't I certainly him. hope so, you useless amateur. I'm no. not sure I've heard that Zara no. voice before in something. A mighty polar whale broke through the ice oh, behind my. Jeremy, and with his mighty voice he proclaimed, You have made a brave effort. You even advanced to the edge of the eternal ice. But you cannot withstand the cold. It is time to give up. To let go. Join me as I slide into the dark, cold waters under the ice. Uh... <laughs> no. Gigantic candy cane. Jerry couldn't resist. He had to lick it just once. You just want my tongue to freeze, do you think? Exactly. Finally, you've read the script. Go right ahead, then. No. I'm going to save the kid later. <laughs> Quiet! Yeah, the audience is starting to slip out of it. Great, and another me. script. The magnum opus of the fantastic Zaroff! A first-class literary stroke of genius, you ignoramus! The title is The Curse of Zaroff, fourth and final act. A masterpiece of simplicity! Jerry was at the North Pole. It was cold. He was freezing. Just like really being there. It's so authentic. Jerry was snowed in and frozen. Everyone was happy about that. The polar whale sang with joy. <laughs> what a beautiful ending. So tragic. Bite me. The Christmas tree. Mum always baked delicious mince pies for Christmas. The young boy's yearning for the familiar sweets was downright overwhelming. It painfully reminded him of the fact that his mother would never again hold him in her arms. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Does he just cry. know? The curse and all that is all right, but dragging his mother into this? Disgusting! <laughs> Quiet! Maybe it'll make me feel better if I take down the decorations. 
All right, I'm probably way over time, so I'm going to go ahead and call it here. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, I'm going to put these together. Then I'm going to call it here. Thank you very much for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Ho, ho, ho. Now I have a very festive fishing rod. I bet this is how Santa fishes. If you did enjoy it, please uh, like, comment, or subscribe. The likes do help. But remember, you don't have to, because I don't tell you what to do. I'm not the boss of you. Bye-bye.